name is Aiza from the Innovation Consortium and today I would like to share with you about Evania Caliper, what it is, how to use it and where we use it um, and basically right here at my table I have the component inside this box <coughs> component I'm having is the vanilla caliper we are talking of. So if you ever come across component like this, it's the one we call a vanilla caliper. <clears throat> what it is in particular, I'll start by giving the definition. Uh, a simple definition of a vanilla caliper. It's just a measuring instrument comprising of a moving jaw, a fixed jaw and the depth gauge plus scales to ascertain the values or the dimensions we are measuring so simply that's a vernier caliper or that's how you can define a vernier caliper so we have various types of vernier calipers apart from this one uh, to mention uh, we have inside calipers we have outside vernier calipers we have the depth vernier calipers, we have the digital vernier calipers, uh, we have the vernier micrometers, uh, we have the hermaphrodite vernier calipers, and today in particular we shall be talking about the hermaphrodite because it's the most common type of caliper we use. Mm. Why it's called hermaphrodite? As I had said, we have the inside, the outside vernier calipers plus the depth vernier caliper. It's called the hermaphrodite because it comprises of all the three types the outside, the inside, then the, the depth. That's why it's called the hermaphrodite. It, it serves a purpose of three in one. Uh, <coughs> So basically, on this very vernier caliper, this part, the bottom part, it's the outside. These are the outside jaws because they measure the outer diameter or the outer dimensions of any workpiece. The upper jaws you're seeing here, these ones are called the inner calipers. These ones measure bowers or inner dimensions like for, for let's say hollow sections to achieve or to measure the bore of a hollow section you'll have to use these ones so they are called inside calipers we say these ones are outside calipers these ones are inside calipers and at the back we are having this blade which runs whenever you open so the blade it's called the depth gauge Actually, it's a gauge. As you can see, it moves. Once I close the caliper to zero, it's also flashing with the, with the extreme end of the caliper. So whenever you move outside, it will be moving as you gauge whatever piece or whatever dimensions you want. So the similarity between these three types or the four types, they all have scales. Mm -hmm. This one in particular, the hermaphrodite, as we are seeing, it has a bottom scale, the upper scale, and these are the two scales. So, these two scales are called the main scales. This one in particular, the bottom one, it's in millimeters, and the upper one, it's in inches. As you can see, this is one inch, we have two inches, we have three inches, four inches, and further on. Then the bottom one, from zero, you have one millimeter, two millimeters, three millimeters, to one. So this is a centimeter, but if you're to, to count the graduation, they are 10, meaning they are 10 millimeters. So 10 to 20, 30, 40, 50, further till the end of the graduations. So the other scales we have, they are these two. And these two are the main reasons as to why it's called the vernier caliper. Um, these two scales 
are called the vernier scales and they are the ones which provide the accuracy of the readings from the main scale mm, how do they or how do they achieve that so these scales are also graduated into increments these increments you're seeing zero one two three four so these ones they are the ones which provide the accuracy of any reading on the main scale so take practically if i if i'm to measure the nut if i'm to measure the distance across flats i open my calipers the moving jaw i open it then i push it to close to these flats you can see the reading the reading is showing 25 on the main scale it's showing 20, actually 35 so the 35 is the reading on the main scale but if you look closely the zero mark is not coinciding exactly on the 35 meaning it is 35 millimeters point some more decimals so those decimals we achieve them by further going to the vernier scale so the vernier scale we look for any graduation which coincides with the upper graduations on the main scale to give us the accuracy so if i'm to see here we are having two if you have to look closely the two is coinciding with the upper graduation on the main scale meaning the accuracy the accuracy of the reading will be 35.2 so it's not 35 exact as we see it is 35.2 the measurement or the dimension across flats of this nut so that's why it's called the vernier it, it has a vernier scale which gives us which gives us the accuracy the accurate reading on the main scale by further bisecting or dividing the graduations on, on the main the divisions on the vernier scale they further divide the main scale reading into increments so as to get an accurate a more accurate reading compared to other measuring instrument like a tape measure uh, we can take another measurement maybe of a nut thickness if i measure the main scale you read to where the zero is coinciding the vernier scale the zero on the vernier scale and the the reading or the graduation on the main scale so you can see the zero is coinciding with the 18 on the main scale so 18 but it's not exactly on 18 it's a little bit forward so you look for any increment on the vernier scale uh, from 0 to, to 10 you look for any increment which is coinciding with any graduation on the main scale that would be the accuracy of the reading on the main scale so we'll be having 18 point we can see here it is it is still one which is coinciding with the graduation on the main scale meaning the accuracy of the thickness of the nut is 18.1 millimeters so that's how the vernier treats dimensions of measurements now when it comes to measuring the bore or the inside diameter or the bore of anything we use the inside jaws still it has the fixed jaw which doesn't move then the jaw which moves so this one helps us to accommodate different dimensions uh, take for instance if i want to measure the bore of this socket 
the female the male socket i'll have to move the moving jaw i place the fixed jaw on one edge or on one surface of the bore then i move the moving jaw it touches the other end of the bore to get the reading or the size of the bore so here the bore it's showing 34 point something so still we go to the vernier scale we look for the graduation which is coinciding with the graduations on the main scale uh, here we see it's a three which is coinciding with the graduations on the main scale meaning our correct reading or the final reading is 34.3 millimeters uh, then furthermore we can go to the depth the depth gauge which is also on this hermaphrodite caliper mm. take for instance if i want to measure the depth of the socket of this allen cap screw i'll have to use the depth gauge mm. simply i just place this edge this edge here on the vernier works as the datum or the reference when i'm measuring so i place the edge on top of the socket then i move in the depth gauge by moving the moving jaw i move in the depth gauge as you can see when i move in the measurement i get on the main scale and the vernier scale will be the depth of the circuit so here i'm having eight eight point seven meaning the depth of this socket of the allen cap screw is eight point seven millimeters so basically that's how the hermaphrodite caliper works and it's the most common type of caliper we use in the workshop I remain Isaac from the Innovation Consortium. Thanks for watching. Tune in for our next episodes of How To. Thank you very much.